Hello there, and in this video we're going to work through a couple examples on how to calculate the fractional derivative of some uh, power functions. Uh, so recall in the last video we pretty much extended the power rule to uh, pretty much any real uh, exponents n and any order derivatives k. And we came up with this uh, gamma represented constant times x to the n minus k. Uh, so let's work through a couple of examples to sort of illustrate how uh, this goes down. Uh, so let's start off with a very uh, trivial example. Uh, so let us assume we want to find the half derivative of the function x. All right, so by this relationship, this is going to be equal to uh, gamma to the 1 plus 1 over gamma 1 plus 1 minus 1 half times x to the 1 minus 1 half because the exponent on x is 1 by assumption. So this is going to be equal to gamma 2 divided by gamma. So 1 plus 1 is going to be 2. 2 minus 1 half is uh, 3 halves. So we have gamma over 3 halves uh, times x to the 1 minus 1 half is going to be 1 half. All right, so gamma of 2 is going to be equal to 1. And gamma of 3 halves, so this is a special relationship that you may know. This is going to be 2 divided by the square root of pi. So, uh, I mean square root of pi over 2, my bad. So square root of pi over 2. Uh, some people memorize this value as the 1 half factorial, for example. Uh, times x to the 1 half. Uh, so therefore, we can say that the half derivative of x with respect to x is going to be equal to 2 divided by the square root of pi uh, times the square root of x. So that is the half derivative of x. Uh, as another example, uh, let us consider the half derivative of the half derivative of x. So you may be wondering to yourself, well, is this really equal to the full derivative of x? Question mark. Uh, well, we'll see, right? So this is going to be equal to the half derivative of the preceding answer that we got. So 2 divided by the square root of pi times x to the 1 half. Uh, so since 2 over square root of pi is a constant, we can factor that out. So we have 2 divided by the square root of pi times the half derivative of x to the 1 half. All right, so applying our power rule uh, for fractional order derivatives, uh, we have that this is going to be equal to gamma of 1 half plus 1 over gamma 1 half plus 1 minus the order of the derivative that we're taking into account, 1 half times x to the original power minus the derivative order that we're taking off. Uh, so this is going to be equal to 2 divided by the square root of pi times gamma of 3 halves divided by gamma of 1 half minus 1 half is going to be 0. So the bottom is just gamma of 1 times x to the 0 power. So x to the 0 power is going to be equal to 1, so that's okay. So we have this is 2 over the square root of pi times so gamma of 3 halves is going to be the square root of pi over 2. Gamma of 1 is going to be 1 times x to the 0 is going to be 1. Uh, so what do we have here? So the square root of pi's will cancel, the 2's will cancel, so we're just left with 1. Uh, so that means the half derivative of the half derivative of x is equal to 1. So that's a happy uh, result that we have here, right? Uh, and one can prove the more general results of, you know, consecutive derivatives if one needs to. Uh, but we'll leave that to a later time. Uh, so let's take a more abstract example, so example 3. Uh, so let us assume we want the one-third derivative of x squared minus 2x. And I'm going to leave out the constant at the end here that usually people see on quadratics uh, for reasons which I'll discuss at the end of this video. Uh, so since derivatives are linear operators, we can distribute this over the uh, subtraction sign. Uh, so this is going to be the third derivative of x squared minus 2 times the third derivative of x. 
and then we can apply the fractional order power rule to each of these two derivatives. Uh, so this is going to be gamma 2 plus 1 over gamma 2 plus 1 minus the order x to the 2 minus the order minus 2 times so the exponent on x is 1 so this is going to be gamma 1 plus 1 over gamma 1 plus 1 minus the order of this derivative times x to the 1 minus 1 third. Uh, so simplifying these fractions what do we get? Uh, so 2 plus 1 is going to be 3, so this is gamma 3 divided by what? So we have 2 plus 1 is 3, uh, 3 minus 1 half is going to be equal to 8 thirds. Uh, and 2 minus 1 third is going to be, let's see, uh, so it's going to be over 1 times 3, 6, and it's going to be 5 thirds. So 5 thirds minus 2 times gamma. 1 plus 1 is 2 over gamma 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 thirds is going to be uh, 5 thirds uh, times x to the 1 minus 1 third that's going to be uh, 2 thirds. Alright so we know what gamma of integers are so gamma 3 and gamma 2 so we can actually uh, simplify this out a little bit uh, so we can finalize this solution so the third derivative of x squared minus 2x is going to be equal to, so gamma 3 is going to be 2. Uh, now gamma of 8 thirds may have an analytical value, it may not, but who cares? Uh, it does have some value, so we'll just leave it as gamma of 8 thirds uh, times x to the 5 thirds minus, see, gamma of 2 is going to be equal to 1 factorial, which is 1, uh, so 2 times 1 is going to be 2, so we have 2 over gamma 5 thirds uh, times x to the 2 thirds. Uh, so this is the third derivative of x squared minus 2x. Alright, that's great. Um, so uh, one last point that I want to mention is uh, the fractional derivatives of constants, for example. Uh, so recall that the derivative of a constant, a, is going to be equal to 0. Uh, so this is the first derivative of a uh, constant. So what about the fractional derivative of a constant? Uh, what would that be? Uh, so if, so suppose uh, we want the half derivative of uh, some number. Let's look at the basic constant, 1. Uh, so if we want to apply the same exact rule, uh, we need to introduce an x term here. Uh, so this is going to be x to the 0. Uh, so this is going to be equal to what? So this is going to be equal to gamma 0 plus 1 over gamma 0 plus 1 minus 1 half times x to the 0 minus 1 half. Uh, so that's going to be equal to what? So that's going to be equal to gamma of 1 over 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. So that's going to be gamma 1 half times x to the minus 1 half. And what is this term here? So gamma of 1 half is something. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it is, and I'm not going to state it here. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, this value is a problem. Uh, because nonetheless, this is not equal to zero, so the fractional derivative of a constant is not in zero, uh, which is pretty much the point I'm going to make. Uh, but notice this value here. Remember, this is the same thing as writing 1 divided by the square root of x. So this is gamma 1 over gamma 1 half. So this is the half derivative of 1. So if this is the half derivative of 1, what do we notice? Well, notice that x cannot be equal to 0 because that's going to give us a non-existent term. Uh, so that becomes a little bit of a problem, is it not? Uh, because one of the property, properties that we usually know that is if p of x is a polynomial, then, you know, p prime of x is a polynomial. And polynomials are always differentiable. 
and they are always continuous. Uh, but if we take fractional steps between these full derivatives, uh, we obtain discontinuities. Uh, so pretty much what we have here is, okay, we have a polynomial P, and we have a derivative of a polynomial P. Uh, so this is continuous. This is continuous. Uh, but then we take a step in the middle, so P one-half of X. This is not continuous. So fractional derivatives jump between fun continuous and non-continuous functions. Uh, but then, you know, you may ask yourself, okay, well, if this function is not continuous and I take the half derivative of this function, so p to the one half of x, uh, well, this should just be equal to p prime of x, right? But if we take this previous example, uh, you know, as a guiding thought, uh, for example, this function is not defined at zero. So since this function is not defined at zero, and we take the half derivative of that, this value also is not gonna be defined to be equal to zero. Whereas if we just take the full derivative of p of x and go from here to here, this does not have any restrictions because remember the domain of polynomials is all real numbers. Uh, so notice that there is a bit of an issue uh, with fractional derivatives when we talk about uh, constants. Uh, so let's just mention uh, that here just as a summary. Uh, the fractional derivative, and I'll call it d alpha, dx alpha, of constants is not equal to zero. And this is an issue. Uh, it creates an issue because uh, the alpha derivative of C is not continuous at the origin. And this is a, a little bit of a problem. And we'll address this later by, you know, slightly changing the derivative uh, definition a uh, little bit. Uh, but for now, this is pretty much how to uh, calculate uh, fractional order derivatives of powers. Uh, notice that we did not do examples of, you know, examples where the exponent is negative, for example, or the orders are negative. We'll discuss these special cases later. Uh, but this is, you know, uh, at least how to consider uh, how to take the alpha derivative if alpha is bigger than zero uh, and n is any real number bigger than zero. We'll consider the other cases at a later time.